wanted to look at pigeon pose. It's one of my favorite to kind of play with. There's so many variations of it that everyone can do it in some form. And it's also one that we can like, we can challenge ourselves in if we want to as well. I don't know what it is about it. To me, it just, it just feels so good to play around with that sometimes I'll just warm up, especially, you know, warming up my hips because we're working with our legs and our hips in this pose and just <clears throat> literally make an entire workout or um, restorative flow kind of thing out of pigeon pose just because I just really enjoy looking at all the levels of it. Another thing to really love about pigeon pose is that the origin of the word comes from pigeon or dove. And dove is a symbol of peace and tranquility, something that we all need more of in our life. And there's a few reasons that we can look in depth at this meaning to look at where the peace comes from. Now, the dove um, kind of, when it sits, has its breast kind of puffed out. And so that leads us into the heart. That leads us into uncovering the peace that's laying in wait for us within our own heart. And because we're working with the hips and opening them up, releasing tension, we're also releasing emotions. There's a great big suite of emotions in the hips. And that kind of releases so that we can find that peace, that serenity, that tranquility within our heart. So one thing that I wanted to pair today, and it's something, a little ritual that you can do anytime outside of yoga before bed is great, is this little peace and tranquility ritual um, that we can pair with intention and a lot of symbolism to kind of, again, layer that energy that we're working with. So we're going to start with sacred smoke. So I have this um, sage and a cute little holder here where you can work with Palo Santo if you would rather as well. I have a blue candle, which stands for peace. Um, calms us down when we're working with blue. You can also add a bunch of blue crystals in, one or many. I chose many because I couldn't pick. I just got back from this. A dear friend who just gifted me all of these blue crystals. So I put them all in this cute little cloud plate and I just get to play it over. Um, you can pair oils. I like to use a lot of pines. This one that I have here is just a mixture of a bunch of different pines that really like it grounds me, but it reminds me of being in the woods and the trees and that brings us a peace. As well. In fact, yesterday I was watching this really interesting documentary about how they were actually studying the brain waves and the heart rate of people that were in the city versus in the woods. And they went back into the lab to see if they could actually recreate that just from the scent that you pulled from the trees and essential oils. So I thought that was really, really interesting documentary. So um, in any order here, I'm going to light my blue candle. You can put the oil on, you can smell it like I was doing, you can even kind of dress your candle in the oil by putting it on your finger and rubbing it on the side. And then I like to take my sage. Do my open my light my candle first. I don't know if you can see that smoke starting. And then once you have it smoking, you can take a feather or just use your hands to kind of pull that smoke around the space that you're working in. And the intention that I have written down for set for today surrounding myself with sacred smoke, from my peaceful heart, serenity will grow. Surrounding myself with sacred smoke, from my peaceful heart, serenity will grow. Surrounding myself with sacred smoke, from my peaceful heart, serenity will grow. And that's what I want to focus on as I start to play with pigeons.
And then, like I said, so many levels. So let's just look at them. Um, a, a great warm up pose to do for this is kind of a bound angle. We've done this one before because we're kind of working and settling here within the hips um, that we want to start to release. So from this one, you can put blocks under the knees or you can put rolled up blankets under the knees if you need the support. Um, if you're flexible, you can kind of like get in this pose and just wee little tiny micro movements here of kind of moving the hips. And then to stretch out a little more, we can take our hands around the feet and kind of round the back down. And even from this pose, you can kind of take the hands back and start to stretch the back. Warming up as much as you want. Pigeon pose is a big pose. If you're going to go into the full pose, you definitely want to get the legs and the hips just fine working and flowing, however you want to do that. So definitely warm up before this pose. Now, if we're looking at the really basic pose of pigeon, like the most basic form of it, um, do it from right here from a seated position we can take one leg out and that foot can be as close back to the thigh as we want or out and take the other leg and just simply putting it back behind us this is a very simple basis for pigeon pose you can put the hands just kind of in between wherever they're comfortable if you need them raised up you can put blocks here and just finding that position that feels comfortable for you and doing it on both sides. Just really simple, really easy. See if here you can kind of bring the spine up as straight as you can, that you're not kind of leaning over to the side too far. You may need a little lean to, to give way for that hip and that's fine as well. So we're just trying though to keep that spine up nice and tall, those shoulders rolled back, chest kind of puffed out, like the dove, like the pigeon does. Feeling that heart open. And then from here, if you look at working our way into pigeon pose and to some various variations, let's start from table. So find your table pose. Very comfortable here. Knees underneath the hips and hands underneath the shoulders. Nice flat back. Another way to work out that back, do a few cat and cows here if you'd like as well to warm up. And then from here, we're going to bring one leg forward. So I'm going to start with this one to the far side. I think hopefully that will help you to see better. So we're going to slide it up. You may have to come up a little bit on the hands. Slide that leg up. Now you can keep the foot, if it's comfortable, back towards this knee. Or if you have more flexibility, you can take it up full so that it's, it's like horizontal across the mat or parallel to the top of it. And then from here, we're going to let this back leg come out. That hip is not on the mat because we are up above it. hands up. Again, we're taking that chest out and doing this kind of full pigeon pose. Now, which ways can you take this pose and make it easier for you? Well, there's lots of different variations. First, you could just take a blanket kind of rolled up here. And then as you come into table, Bring the leg up and over the blanket. And so this blanket is then giving you a little bit of support to where that hip is. So from here, let's look at how we can come down and relax. So when I have this, this underneath, you'll notice that my foot is coming in. I can't take the leg up. I'm not flexible enough take it up and straight once I have my hip on something. But if 
that gives you the lift that you need to do the pose, then we're not worried about which way this leg goes because both of them are correct. So they call one, like this is called the shin on the floor. It's like a beginner's version of pigeon. So from this, since we have a little thing relaxed here, let's look at coming down, which is called reclining pigeon. So we're gonna come down on the forearms here and just take our head down to the mat. trickier to get the leg back around if you're using this. So let's look at it from the other side. Let's go back to table and give you a visual of both sides because the nice thing about pigeon is you don't have to turn around, you can just do it facing the same way. So again, we're going to take the opposite leg now. I'm working with my right and we're going to Stretch, slide it up, and again, that foot can come back towards the knee, or you could bring it up parallel. Now, you might notice that this side feels a little different than the other. For me, this is a little tighter, this one, than the other one. And then we're going to let that leg slide back, walk our hands back, and come up. And you can walk them even farther back if you have body has the capacity to do it, and stretching, and then again reclining, coming down onto our forearms and letting the head come to the mat. And then coming back up. Now there is one farther piece to pigeon, which is king. Now, king pigeon, I'm not, I can't do it fully. In king pigeon, you're bringing this leg up and you're bringing the arm back behind to catch it. Now, I have, I don't have the flexibility in my shoulders to do this, but one way you can kind of do it in a different way is just reach back, which is what I like to do. And then if I'm really challenging myself, I like to take my hand, other arm up, which is just my own personal little version of king pigeon since I can't do a full king pigeon. Okay, so let's look at real quick the restorative ways that you can do pigeon. So there's two ways that you can set up the bolsters to do it. One of them, both of them are going to go um, horizontal across the mat. So we have the one up here for our head and we have the one back here for our leg. So when we do this, we're going to do table pose over the first bolster, and then we're going to bring the one leg forward. Now you might need some help. To me, it's a little more challenging to get the leg up and over this way, but we're going to rest the knee down, and so we're really sitting up on this one, letting that knee come back and then we're coming forward to rest our head on this bolster. Now the other way that we can do this, and again, you're a little, I kind of come up onto my mat so I can bring this leg back. And I'm going to switch out these for this one. If you have a smaller one, you're definitely you want it back and your bigger one front. So we can do them just opposite. Instead of horizontal, now they're going parallel to the length of the mat. And we need this little space here to put our leg. So we're gonna come up under our table a little bit over this top one, slide that leg forward so it comes back, and then we're lifting this back leg up over. So it's kind of sliding, and now that whole leg is raised. You might want a blanket here if this is uncomfortable on the knee. And then we're actually coming down. You can come onto it if that's more comfortable, or you can come around it. 
laying the head this way. So this is this is pretty comfortable. Um, you know, I, I can definitely feel the stretch in the leg. What you would have to do if you were going to do this on, on the other side is simply move this over, move the other one to the other side, and then again coming up into table, taking that leg up and around. When you stretch this out, you can kind of walk it over on. And then rest on down. Okay, so I have one more thing to show you. I know I'm kind of moving quickly through these today. And I'm giving you different options that when you set up your ritual if you want, or once you warm up, you can just kind of play with. Spend your whole practice just playing with playing in pigeons. So there's one more, there's a supine version, which a lot of people call four square, that you can do as well. So we're going to come down onto the mat. And then with our legs up, let's take the right ankle over the left knee. And we're kind of opening up that hip here. And then again, you can reach through and hold. Really flexible, flexing the feet, you can take one leg straight. On the other side, let's take the left ankle to the right knee, and then coming through, flexing both feet, and if you want, you can straighten this one, or you can just take it down. for you today for pigeons. You know, lots and lots of different um, variations that we have going here. Just remember to take it slow, to take it easy, to be kind to your body, warm up, see what feels good in pigeon, pull back down, make that your practice, and make finding that peace within your heart a small part of the practice. on the bed, especially if you were just going to use a few pillows to prop yourself up, maybe light the candle and the sage on, with the crystal and the oil on your nightstand for your bed, and work in that restorative pigeon a little bit, really finding that kind of peace and tranquility before you're going to sleep would be a wonderful practice. I thank you for being here with me today.